Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further two applications of integrals, and now go over a new topic in the uh, basically in, in the topic of application of integrals in physics and engineering. And now look at moments and centers of mass, and go over an introduction on this. Basically, another application of integrals in physics and engineering is in determining the centers of mass. So let's go ahead and go through what these are and illustrate them uh, further. So moments and centers of mass. The point P on which a thin plate of any given shape bal balances horizontally is called the center of mass, or you could also call it center of gravity of the plate. So just to get a basic idea of what I mean by the center of mass, let's say you had a, a, sh a, a thin plate of any, sh any shape, doesn't matter what shape it is. Let's say something like that. It's a thin horizontal plate right here. And let's say we want it to balance it at, at a point. At that point, for example, if it looks something like this, that it's evenly weighted, it would be somewhere around here. If you could just look at the weight, it would look something like around there where that's where it balances. And if you were to draw something to hang, let's say this is on the 3D side behind, through it, and let's say you, you could basically have it balance at this point across. So if you balance it on this, this is called the center of mass. That's the point. Yeah, and this point here is P. So now let's look at a, a simpler situation just so it's easier to develop a formula for this. So we first consider the simpler situation where let's say two masses M1 and M2 are attached to a rod of negligible mass on opposite sides of a fulcrum. For example, this right here is a fulcrum as well. It's a fulcrum wherever you're balancing uh, anything on it at, 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 and at distances D1 and D2 from this fulcrum. So let's just draw this out. It's just a thin rod of, let's say, assume it has no mass. So something like this here where this is M1 and this is M2, and let's say the fulcrum is right here. So you're balancing it on here. That is our fulcrum. And the distance is right here. This is D1, we'll call this D2. Now the interesting part is the rod will balance right here. You can balance it if we have m1 times d1 equals to, on the other side, m2 times d2. So the mass of this times by the distance ac uh, across the fulcrum. If, they, if the multiplication of these two equal each other, then they balance out. And this is actually, in fact, an experimental fact discovered first by Archimedes and is called the law of the lever. And, and basically to get a better il illustration, think of a lighter person balancing a heavier one on a seesaw by simply sitting farther away from the center than that person. So now let's, yeah, so now let's try to uh, develop a more general formula. So now suppose that the rod lies along the x-axis. So let's write it in terms of uh, x-axis that we know of. So with the mass m1 is at x1, and the mass m2 is at x2, and the center of mass is at x with this line above. So let's draw that out. So if we had an x-axis like this, let's say our zero point is here. Now the rod lies all along this x-axis, so, uh, so at x1 we have m1. So let's say x, x1 is here, x1. And then at this point we have the mass M1, and then let's say X2 is over here. And at this point we have mass M2. So let's say the fulcrum is at, again is at the center of mass and it's perfectly balanced. Let's say it's right here. So this is our X with the line above. That's our center of mass, like that. So what we have now is the distance across here, this is our D1, this is simply x uh, center of mass minus x1. That's because, well, we obviously know that because that's zero point, this full length is the center of mass. From here to here is our x1, etc. Draw this a bit closer, more accurate. And all the way up to here is x2. So the, the subtraction, we get this distance across, which is here. 
and likewise this distance across here is going to be let's write that this is simply x2 minus this center of mass point so we have that and this one could be considered our d1 this is our d2 and thus to balance we need basically uh, m1 times it by d1 equals to m2 times it by d2 where we know what these are in terms of x so we have m1 this is x center of mass minus x1 equals to m2 times it by x2 minus the center of mass point and now we have to try to solve for this value so we'll separate these together and factor it out so let's expand this so we have m1 times center of mass point then x then m1 x1 equals 2 m2 x2 minus m2 center of mass and now we move this over to this side move this to this side so we have x center of mass on one point so we have m1 x uh, center of mass plus m2 times the center of mass move this over we have m1 plus I mean m1 times x1 plus m2 times x2 and now we get right here factored out x center of mass times by m1 plus m2 equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 so, and then just divide by m1 plus m2 we get x center of mass is equal to the summation m1 x1 plus m2 x2 all divided by m1 plus m2 where the bottom is is the total mass and now the numbers m1 and x1 over here are called the moments of the masses m1 m2 again with respect to the origin so this is a key word for you to remember so moments and it's and you can think of it as the multiplication of the distance times by mass but this is with respect to the origin which is uh, the distance about this point here and the above equation says that the center of mass this uh, x value here is obtained by adding the moments of the masses and dividing by the total mass m1 plus m2 and in general if we had a bunch of these particles different masses different distances then I'll just uh, ignore I'll just, I'll just add to it okay so in general we have if we have a system of n particles with masses m1 m2 all the way to mn located at x1 x2 all the way to xn on the x-axis it could be shown that the center mass is located at well again as you can see this pattern if it doesn't matter if you have infinite number of different masses different distances it, we could show that the actual uh, center of mass is going to be equal to simply the, the exact same pattern there this which which would equal to the summation from i equals one up to n of m i x i all divided by the total mass of all the particles so where i equals one up to n and this is m i and you can consider this simply as m over n where basically where our i mean m over m small m not n where m here the small m is is the equal to the summation i equals one up to n of m i or the summation of all the particles and is the total mass of the system total mass of the system and our capital m is is can be considered as and this one's equal to simply i equals one the summation of all of the moments and is called the moment this is called the moment of the system and in brackets because in this it's always about the origin about the origin and where wherever you x is zero right here and now what's interesting is you could rewrite this above formula here so you could rewrite um, the center of mass is equal to capital M over small m 
you multiply this out you could get uh, basically I'll just write it here m times x uh, like that where the center of mass of so the total mass times by center of uh, center of mass point equals to the moment which again we know that this equals the total summation of all the moments I'll just write it here just to illustrate my point in a bit so and this is m i x i and now writing it as this formula basically states that if the total mass you can consider it as if the total mass were considered as being co concentrated at the center of mass this point right here so if we take this entire summation of all the particles and concentrate it at one single point we obviously get a momentum of this full of this uh, of this center of mass of this total mass then its moment would be the same as that of the system so what we're saying is that is if you just take the total mass and then uh, multiply it by the center of mass point right here then it will have a moment and that moment is obviously it's going to be equal to if you took each individual particle by itself and summed it up so basically the idea is all these points along this uh, fulcrum or any fulcrum uh, you can consider it as one point I mean, as one giant mass at, at a point and that's at the fulcrum for example if you have a basic lever like this if you took this entire mass and then put all of the weight all of the weight onto the fulcrum it's obviously not going to move it's not going to move this is m1 plus m2 so that's our center of point so if you put it all here it doesn't doesn't matter how much weight you put it's not going to move across here and that's the balancing point and it makes sense because this point this fulcrum is is going to be bearing this entire m1 m2 load onto that point and this will make more sense as I get through some examples in later videos. So now if we consider a system of n particles with masses m1, m2, all the way to mn, located at the point, instead of just the one-dimensional x1, x2, we'll look at x1, y1, x2, y2, all the way to x, n, y, n, so let's say random points. In an x, y plane, as shown, let's say we had something like this, this is the y-axis and then this is the x-axis and let's say we had a point m1 here its distance across the y side is y1 here is x1 let's say we had a point right here m2 this distance we'll call it y2 and then here we'll call this x2 and let's say we had one more point like here so now the, the idea is trying to find the center of mass here so this one we'll call this x3 and then this point right here is y3 so again we're trying to find this center of mass if this was let's say a, a plate you're looking downwards on where would the, the point be balanced on yeah, and now by analogy with the one dimensional case we can define the moment of the system about the y axis to be we'll call this my and this will be basically the summation of all the moments uh, this is i equals one up to n and now this is m i all the masses but now we're going to multiply it by x i so about this axis here so we're going to be dealing with all of the points across here on the horizontal side of it and basically we're going to be trying to balance about the y axis kind of so now and I'll illustrate that in a bit. It's basically, in the moment of, of the system about the x-axis, we'll call this mx. This is going to be called. This is going to be the summation i equals one up to n of mi, all the moments times it by yi instead of x. So the mx has this yi, and then the my is um, xi like that. Yeah, then basically the moment about the y-axis, my measures the tendency of the system to rotate about the x about the y-axis, and then mx measures the tendency to rotate about the x-axis. So, for example, the y-axis right here. Uh, so we're going to look at all of the points here that are basically trying to rotate this about here or about across here. So we're going to be dealing with the x points, like x1 that are x2 versus this well, x-axis right here we're going to be looking at what's rotating it 
about this way. So we're going to be dealing with the y side of it. So y1 and across here, well, y2, etc. And basically, as in the one dimensional case, the coordinates, uh, this one center of mass x will line above and y with the line above of the center mass are given in terms of the moments by the formulas. So if you just rearrange this one, so center of mass, the x value for it is going to be my over mass. And this one right here is simply going to be the, the y value of the center mass is the moment about the x-axis divided by m. So again, that's just rearranging. Uh, it, that's bit, pretty much by analogy from th these points across there. So what we have here, and again, where where we have the ma mass right here, m is equal to the total mass, i equals 1 of, up to n of mi is the total mass of the system. Of the system. And then this mx, that's that's just this total, um, that's a total moment about the x-axis. And my is a total mass of all the par particle, I'm um, total moment of all the particles about the x-axis. Well, I mean about the y-axis. That's over here. And also, like in the one-dimensional case, since the mass the times it by the center of mass in terms of x equals to the moment about the y-axis, and here m y equals m x. Right here, the center of mass is is the point basically where a single particle of mass m would have the same moments as the system. So it's again. So basically, the idea is we would take. Um, yeah, so the idea is, again, it's saying that if you had a system such as this, this is the x, y, you had m1, uh, m2, etc., m3, and all this, this is equivalent to writing, basically, right here, x, y, one giant m value, like that, at this point here. Let's say it's let's draw it somewhere uh, farther, so say at this point M in some giant one right here where it's at, this is Y like that, the center mass and this right here is our X uh, center mass there, that's actually at this point here since it's really big, I'll just draw it all the way here I'll erase this so this point here, this is our y, and this full mass is is going to be our m. Let me erase. I don't know why it's erasing. M, which again, m is equal to the m1 plus m2. So this has the same moment as all of these combined. So that that's that's a good illustration of what I mean by this. Uh, this uh, this mass times it by the distance across. This is x. the center mass point x is equal to the moment about the y-axis and that again equals to the total summation of all of them about the y-axis or, or accounting for all of these about it etc. So that's that's pretty much what it illustrates. Anyways, that is all for today. This is just a quick uh, intro on center of mass and in the next videos and examples I'll show you how to uh, basically write solve examples and more complicated examples using integrals and again the idea is to uh, break it into small parts and sum it to infinity and take a limit and thus writing it as an integral. Anyways all for today if you learned like always you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching stay tuned for another math easy solution.